How yeah. did that come into play with the with the McTwist and all that? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Well, I was at a summer camp in 84 with Lance and Rodney. And um, actually, one of our... We had different, like, students every week, like 50 to 60 new kids from around Europe. I don't even know how they hmm. planned that. For three weeks. Okay. Different group of guys. Hmm. Hmm. And our last group of guys, uh, Bod Boyle, was one of our students. No way. No way. What? Amazing. Yeah. And, uh, like, after skating that ramp, it was a beautiful ramp. Um, it was... Uh, it's very special, that ramp. And I think these guys from Sweden are doing a documentary that's going to be coming out because I filmed some stuff with them in Sweden. And, you know, I don't know. I guess because I was part of it, they wanted me to What talk was so to special them. about it? I can't tell you. It's a secret. <laughs> I'll wait for the but documentary. You, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and it was a mistake, too, you'll find out. Okay. But, um, anyway, this ramp was this, one of the first bigger transition ramps because most at, at that time, most of the ramps were kind of like Jeff Grosso's ramp at Vans right now. You know, like nine foot transition with a foot of vert. Mm, okay. you know, just it's small. Yeah. You can do whatever on right. it, but it's very small. It's smaller, so. so we got there and we were. Cab and I had skated a, a year before that some other ramps, but this ramp was. It was just these giant transitions, probably about twelve to thirteen foot, with no vert. It went oh, up wow. to vert, and it had like a Schmidt stick rail as coping. Seriously, mm -hmm. what? seriously, yeah. <laughs> okay. And we're like, "What the what is <laughs> this?" You know. Yeah. Well, I guess this is where we're gonna be for three weeks. Let's start skating it. And we just started skating, and like it was really weird at first because it's just like you you don't even know what to do with your hands and stuff because you have so much time and right. you're like, right. it's no. taking so long. How are we gonna get? How are we gonna get airs? You know, you're gonna you're gonna hang up. <laughs> As long as you hit the coping, you didn't hang up. So we had done every trick that we could do. I mean, we got used to it. We loved it. It was fun. I mean, I think me and Klaus Grobke and Lance Mountain did triples there. And you guys should find that picture, by the way. That's triples? Sick. Triples, Klaus Grobke, Mike McGill, Lance Mountain. Uh, At Sweden, if you Google Sweden, we're on uh, Ratvik, no, no. Swedish summer camp. Swedish Triple. summer camp. Yeah. Raj, can you get that? Anyway, that would be something for your viewers to see just because I totally forgot about it. And um, I guess the last week, probably the last three days, I, you know, people ask me, like, how did you get this idea? I mean, everybody thought of, oh, yeah, we can do more of a spin or whatever, 540. And I'm like, that's eh, not going to work. And I, the, that previous winter, uh, I had done well in some contests in, uh, in Florida. And Stacy Peralta asked me, where do you want to go for Christmas break? I'm like, I want to go to Cherry Hill. I want to go skate with Jamie Godfrey and Mike Jezolowski, you know, because I would see them at contests. And I wanted that. I wanted to go to that park. So they sent me there for Christmas break. And uh, Fred Blood from California, the roller skater, was out there. And I think Duke Renning. Hmm. And those guys always got respect from us because they always tried to grab, like they were grabbing a skateboard. It wasn't like, you know, hokey, hokey. And they would, you know, normally you roller skate like this. They would skate like this. With their feet turned out. Turned, and Ooh. they would go up and grab like they were grabbing a backside air or a frontside air. I've seen that. Oh. So right. we respected that because they were trying tricks, you know. And I saw Fred Blood in a keyhole. He did a, he did a 5'4", just <laughs> spun around like, you know, four feet, five feet out. And I was like, that's so unfair. Was he grabbing his skate, though? <laughs> he was... Yeah, you know. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> little little okay. burl twirl. I gotcha, gotcha. So I remember thinking back going, wow, man, that would be so cool if you could do that on a skateboard. But, you know, like, easy for him. You don't have to grab a board. You don't have to, you know. And so it stuck in the back of my mind, and I was just like, I think I could do this if I just did it out, you know. So I didn't tell anybody, and I went to the ramp one night. And it never gets dark in Sweden at night in the summer. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's like. You could skate like three in the morning. But anyway, it was dinner time, and I was like, I'm not eating that. I'm going to go skate again. Okay. And Bod Boyle and one other guy, nobody knows who it was, was sitting on the ramp. They didn't go. And I started trying this. And uh, about a half hour later, I actually, because I thought if I could just spin around, I could get to my knees. You guys probably heard this before, but it was you know, it was kind of frightening because you didn't want to, I didn't want to land on my head or my neck. Like, I'm like, I, you can't see. Mm -hmm. And you had to do it out because it's not going to work. Right. And when I completed one, it was just like, oh, there it is. 
and I went to go over to Bod and his friend, and they were running back to the camp already. They, I couldn't even talk to them because I wanted to see like what it looked like. What it, what, you, you know, had like, landed it. I landed it and skated out up to the other side of the wall, and wow. they had already took off to the camp going to tell Lance and Klaus and everybody. So they had, oh, wow. they had seen it and they're going up. They didn't even want to congratulate you. Yeah. They, were, they wanted to go and tell <laughs> they everybody. They were gone. So I was like, a few minutes later, everybody came from the camp. Lance like, come on, let's see it. Like, what do you got there? What? And I did it and I did it like, you know, four or five feet out. And he's like, there's no way you just learned that. We go, no way. He Damn. grabbed his stuff. He got on there. And as the you know, story goes, he hung up and just landed on top, wrecked himself. Oh, he tried to replicate yeah. it. Yeah, he was done for the night. That was it for Lance. And then, um, so the next, that next day, you know, I did a bunch of them. And, and like, I could do them almost every time. It was crazy. How like, I could just do them backside air and do them. And Lance is like, we got to get like pictures of this. Like, I don't have a sequence camera. And like, how are we going to shoot this? He goes, McGill, just do it right here every time. And he put a sticker. He's like, just try to get as close as you can. <laughs> And he would take a picture at a time. Oh my gosh! And we had a, <laughs> That's amazing. We had a string of pictures that we put together for the intelligence report that I'm sure you can find. Yeah. And that's Lance taking individual pictures to make the whole sequence so you could see the trick. No. You must have done it like yeah, like ten times then or plus. Oh yeah, no, at least, at least, yeah. Like for, to get that sequence, I mean, yeah. how yeah. crazy yeah, yeah. is that to learn something that and just have it unlock like that? Instant. That's like uh, that's bizarre. Yeah, it was that was kind of crazy because I, everybody goes through that when they say they learn the twist or whatever. Then you go through this phase where you're like, oh, I can't do them anymore. Like mm. you're like, oh, I have to think about this now. <laughs> it doesn't come just like that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> was this at the time also when things were being invented, like like uh, the cab and like all these things? Was this the, Cab, uh, Caballero was already invented. It was already invented. Yeah. So people were already yeah. coining these tricks that oh, everybody yeah. was doing. Yeah. The, Tony did the Madonna the I Mad think, the year right. before that. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, a lot of tricks. And then um, I think the McTwist came through Rodney and, and Lance. Mm -hmm. They start calling it. The McTwist. McTwist. So like, oh, whatever. whatever. <laughs> right In right. mine, because, you know, my, you know, my heroes, Alan Gelfin and, you know, my... <laughs> Traveling buddy Caballero, they all they had their tricks. I right, what did I have? I didn't have nothing. <laughs> but now you got the yeah, McTwist. Right. McTwist. Sure. How crazy is that? Because like at the time, I'm sure you don't even think about how far that would go in skateboarding. I mean, it is a normal terminology, the McTwist. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> yeah, no, it, it's and it's think it's, about it. It's it's. I enjoy hearing it just because I'm not like I don't have a huge head, but it's like <laughs> it's I, cool. I like them recognizing it, especially like you know snowboard Olympics for the girls sure. and stuff. Right. Oh, because yeah. now they do like you know, uh, you know double, double McTwist. Actually, this guy on NBC was interviewing uh, Sean White. Yeah, uh -huh. you know I know Sean. I I actually helped him with his twist years ago okay. at the YMCA skate park, and. Uh, so he was getting interviewed. I think it was when he did. Uh, was it the Italy Olympics? He, uh, they were calling it the double corkscrew or something. Oh, I'm not actually. I'm not. This is no sure. snowboarding. Yeah. Anyway, it's basically. So, this NBC guy was like, uh, "So, Sean, how did you invent the double corkscrew, whatever?" And he fucking corrected them. Amazing. He's like, no, it's a double Mick twist. Is actually came from a guy named Mike McGill. No <laughs> way. Yes. That's amazing. That's awesome. See, kudos to him. Yes. For the yes. schooling. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, you yeah, do yeah. a trick that transfers into a different like sport. Almost, I know. Right. Like it goes into snowboarding. That's pretty. That's carried pretty cool. over. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I think uh, a guy sent me something. A guy on a surfboard did one, like an ollie twist i was like oh wow <laughs> what yeah. wow yeah and then yeah no there's somebody grabbing now too it's, it's i don't know how to do it. Yeah. the, the cabalera or half cab is in um they do that in bmx i think or yeah. not or yeah yeah on, on bikes yeah. oh, that's what they call the half cab. Yeah, yeah yeah we have um now this uh, tell us if this is this is what it says one of the first mctwist swedish summer camp 1984 super 8 footage yeah this is it that's the ramp yep. in question. What? There it is. Wow. That's it right there. Yeah. Wow. And this is every time you got this on lock. You're good. <laughs> Look at yeah. the footage. Yeah. That guy, I actually have that, uh, that footage from the guy. So sick. So DVD. this was after the fact because Lance had 
try to piece together a sequence, obviously, right? Yeah. And this was after this somebody else. This was somebody's else. Super 8 video camera, a German guy. Okay, so other people were that there. We had to get it through the year. Uh, yeah, I think when Stacy was doing the, man. what you call it, we got it through, I think, Tony Magnus or somebody that knew of this guy that had this footage. And I'm like, dude, we got to get that footage. <laughs> right, <laughs> absolutely. So how fast, I mean, when you got back from Sweden, obviously, now yeah. you're doing this McTwist. Yeah. How fast did that spread? Well, remember, there's no cell phones sure. or whatever. Um, I think that next month I was going to California c to compete in Del Mar. Okay. At one of the series. But so I had, I probably had a few months, a couple months. And I had, you know, all, the only thing I had to skate was my personal 12 foot wide ramp at my dad's sod yard that they let me put there with one rollout like it is wow 12 12 feet wide yeah that's tiny yeah and you're not doing <laughs> you're not doing the twists on this yeah 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 you are yeah okay um but i would drive to go i drove up to um kona skate park because uh, you know we had uh donnie griffin was up there and he was younger than me but uh it was just always fun to skate that ramp and skate with him and some of the locals. So I made it like kind of a secret. I went up there and we were skating the ramp and I said, I said, Don, I want to try something. Just let me know what, what, you know, what it looks like, you know? And I did a backstater on the other side and I did it right in front of his face. And he, he jumped down on the ramp. He's like, McGill, what did you just do? What is that? What are you crazy? <laughs> he couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, that was fun times. And then I think when I came, word had spread already that, oh, Mike's doing some kind of trick or whatever. Mm. And so I was like, well, I want to try to keep it, like, just skate and, you know, and then maybe in my run, like, I'll just do it. Bust oh, it out. Yeah. People would be freaked out. But when I got there, Neil Blender met me at the car. He wanted, <laughs> he wanted, he wanted would to see not, it. Would not let me. I was like, all right, Neil, let's just go do it. All right. <laughs> just went and did it <laughs> so but you started but then you started doing it in the contests yeah and people were blown away probably obviously yeah. like yeah. they're seeing some i mean everything's new back then yeah you know but you know guys like lester kasai mm. and tony they were already trying it in the back bowl because they're like we got to do that trick yeah and lester kasai came really close that weekend of making one and then he was one of the first he was the first after me to make it wow yeah that leads me to this question back then right you invent a trick yeah you got the mctwist now you see all of these guys your peers included trying to do this trick how does that make you feel back then like a little bit like hey that's this is my trick or like hey everybody <laughs> you know what i mean yeah well d definitely listen we were very competitive uh, you know sure, and yeah. um i was like you know i'm gonna save the twist for the finals <laughs> 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 and then i'd be like you know i'm just doing the same tricks everybody else is doing here i'm i'm borderline getting gonna make the cut i'm right. gonna throw a twist in made the cut, made the cut. yeah, yeah there you so go. that's what it was your did. secret weapon like, almost right, if you didn't do the twist you didn't make the cut that's how it became it was crazy wow. that became the, the staple huh pretty much the, i mean it was because okay. the cut was you know twist, there was probably twist, twist. uh some of those big contests there's probably 130 people competing wow that's, that's a, a lot, lot of people. That's man. a lot of people. Definitely. Yeah. Guess what? Twelve make the cut. Wow. And yeah. then only if when they had a jam or whatever, only eight were allowed on the ramp. So four people had to be cut. Yeah. You know. Um, but did you, did you want to see other people doing the trick though? Oh yeah, no, I I loved it. You it did. Great. Okay. Yeah. But I just wanted the judges to know who made that trick. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. This is the <laughs> Mick Twist, Mick Gill. Yeah, you know, right. like you let's make know. this let's make this correlation here. <laughs> and were you just this still? Is, oh, but, oh, sorry, Kelly. But yeah. real quick, this is the the photo of the yeah, triples. Yeah, I can't believe you guys. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Wow. Look at that, that board. That's like kind of scary. <laughs> Wait. So give us a rundown. Who who's on top, middle, bottom? That's me on top. But you know what? That that's my first board with the jet fighter on it. Okay. And then Klaus Gropke is underneath doing a frontside air, and then Lance comes screaming underneath, grinding. <laughs> and so I had to get on the extension to do the big air. <laughs> Wait, uh, so how, how did you guys approach this? Because uh, it looks like you're lined up exactly over each other, but that means yeah, you so, guys had to come from different angles. Yeah, so Lance would start on this side, say he's regular foot. 
Uh-huh. Okay. Doesn't even look like Lance. Uh, Klaus would start over here. And then I was on this big extension right <laughs> in front of that. So when I would drop in, then Klaus would have to time it off of me <laughs> so that when I went up, he could do a front side air underneath and Lance would have to time it off class to get right on oh. and just scream oh here my because gosh. we we piled on each other. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. And uh, and then we came out with that. And I think a photographer named Dan Berkey took that picture. Okay. And he still lives in California. Loves skating from right. Brazil. And uh, that's an epic photo. right That is there. Definitely, really yeah. sick. Yeah. The colors are flowing at that time too. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. Different color. <laughs> you got the green, yellow, yeah. red. So that, that doesn't look like Lance. Yeah, you know, that was... Yeah, I think he has a beanie over his helmet. You know, Lance. I mean. <laughs> but that was earlier on in the camp because I recognized that board. But then there was another board that had the skull and snake that I think Stacy had sent over there because mm. they were so excited about the graphic was done finally. And that's what I used to do the twist. And I have that board today in my in my house. Seriously. So it has duct tape on the nose and all. Oh, it's my that's lucky awesome. wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, Kent, let me get this. this is your first pro board? No. Or just a graphic that they were psyched first on? First time the skull and snake graphic came out. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I got you. I got you. Okay.